In this video, we're going to be tackling a coding challenge which involves an array and an expected sum. There are various variations for this challenge. Uh, one popular variation that I've seen is something referred to as two sum. So the idea is this. You're given an array of numbers and you're given one number which is the result. And what you need to do is find two numbers in that array on adding which is going to result in the result number that you have. So uh, I'm going to look at a problem on lead code, which is closest to what I'm trying to solve. Um, this is this is kind of what it looks like. Let's solve this variation of the problem today. Given an array of integers, return the indices of the two numbers such that they add up to a specific target. You may assume that each input has exactly one solution. You may not use the same element twice. So those are good uh, points to note. If these weren't provided in the question and you were asked this in an interview, the first thing to ask would be those things, right? So am I to assume that you would have one solution or multiple solutions? Or am I to assume that I should use two different numbers? I can't use the same number twice. Those are valid questions to ask the interviewer. So here's an example. Let's say this is these are the numbers, right? Two, seven, 11, and 15. And the target is nine. So you need to find two numbers in this array on adding of which results in nine. So these are the two inputs that you're gonna get. Get an array and a number. So here we find that num of zero and num of one. So two plus seven add together to get nine. So the result will be those indices. So it'll be zero and one because it's these two which add up to get nine, right? So this is a challenge. Let's look at the pseudocode for how we would approach solving this problem. Let's add some dummy numbers here so that it's useful for us to practice. This is something that I would recommend uh, when you're whiteboarding a problem. Just add some sample inputs so that you have something to go off of and you have uh, a concrete objective which guides your algorithm. So let's say I add some numbers here. Let's say two, three, seven, four, eight. And then uh, your sum, the result is seven. Now, you know, by looking at this, that these two are the values that you need, right? And uh, what you need to do is return an index the result, the output. So this is the expected result. And uh, this is these two are the inputs. And then the output would be the index one, which is this guy here, and the index three, which is this guy here. So this is what we need to do. So how would you go about solving this? The easiest brute force way of doing this would be to loop through this array in a nested loop, right? Take each element and then compare it with every other element here and see if adding those two results in seven. Well, no, then take this element and compare it with every other element. So you're basically having a i equals uh, zero to n and then j equals zero to n and then you're comparing array of i plus array of j to check if it's equal to the expected result. All right, this is the brute force solution, which is not recommended. This results in the time complexity of O n square, which is not the best of algorithms. You don't want to do that unless you have to. And in this case, there is a better way. So what's the better way? So if you think about the, the brute force approach that we did, we had two nested loops, right? You had a top loop and a inner loop. What the outer loop was doing was looking at one element and then in the inner loop, using the inner loop, we were comparing that element against each of the other elements to see if the sum of those resulted in the expected result. That's kind of like the kind of comparison is something that you will have to do. You will have to find those two elements. But then the problem is that since we are looking at an array, given an element, given one value, to find if that delta exists in the array, you have to loop through, right? Because there's no other way. The way array works is you gotta have that positioning way of looking up things. So let's say your expected uh, result is seven and uh, you've got three. Well, now guess what? You have to loop through the whole array to look for a four. But then let's say we find an alternative data structure that makes it easy for us to look up a particular number, right? So we're going through this, this array Let's say we loop through this just once. Instead of having a nested array, we loop through it just once. And every time we encounter a number, we kind of register it in a different data structure, which makes it easy for us to look up 
the value, right? So we find a two and then we say, okay, two, if we have an empty data structure now, I'm just gonna save that two somewhere. Say, save it in a set, for example. Then we find a three. Well, three, I'm gonna check if the delta, so let's say the result is seven, right? Now three requires another number, which is four, okay? So I'm gonna say expected result minus the number that I have right now, which is four. I'm gonna say, did I encounter a four before? I'm keeping track of all the numbers that I've encountered in my one pass through the array, right? I'm keeping that in a separate data structure. So when I get a three, I'm gonna subtract it from the expected number, I'm gonna get the delta and say, okay, is this delta something I've already ex encountered before in my scan of the array? I'm gonna look at that data structure. Is there a four in there? Well, no, the four isn't in there. So I'm going to move to the next number, right? So before we had the separate data structure, the only way to find that out was there another number was to kind of loop through the whole array. But let's say I use a data structure which facilitates lookup. In that case, I can quickly look up from this data structure. And if the delta exists, if I've already encountered the delta before, great. We can go ahead and return the value. If not, I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna save this number into this data structure for later, right? So we need this data structure, which is, which is handy for looking up things. So there are two data structures that come to mind. One is a set and one is a map. A set is something that you can look at and say, okay, does this thing contain a value? It's a very, very uh, quick operation to have a set of numbers and say, does the set contain? That's off one operation, right? The other option is to use a map, in which case, again, the key value pairs, the key is something that you can look up in off one time. So which one of those two data structures do we need to use? If we use a set, we will know what the number is and we will be able to tell, okay, we've got uh, a match here, but then what we we'll end up losing is the position of where we found that thing, right? So let's say we find a three and we know that, okay, there is no four yet. So I'm gonna save this in this data structure. And then eventually I'm gonna encounter a four. I'm gonna look at the Delta three. Have I encountered a three before? Yes, I've encountered a three. Now I've got four and three, which equals to seven. I've got the result. Now I know the position of four, but I've lost the position of three because I just have a set which is contained. Okay, does this number exist or not? What I also need to do is not only do I need to save that number that I've encountered before, I also need to save the position of that number, right? So when I get a three and I'm saving it to the data structure, I need to say, okay, I found three in position index one. So that when I eventually encounter a four, I look up, okay, does three exist? Yes, three exists. What is the index in which I found three? Well, that is index one. So I can take that index and then return from my method, the position of four and the position of three, which are the two numbers which eventually make up the result, all right? So because of these constraints, I need a map. Right, so this is how the algorithm is gonna go work with a map. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one pass through this thing. It's not gonna be a double loop, it's just gonna be one pass through this thing. And every time I get a number, so let's say I get the number two, and uh, I'm going to say for i equals zero to n. Once I get a number, I'm going to calculate the delta, which is basically the difference between the expected result, let's call this target, minus or of i, okay? Now, if this delta is something that I've already encountered, then they've got my answer. So what I need to do is I need to keep a list of all the numbers that I've encountered in this loop. So I'm gonna keep this uh, map, I'm gonna call this num map. I'm gonna initialize it to an empty map first. And this is the map in which I keep track of every number that I have found. So what I'm gonna do is if num map contains delta, then I need to return the current index, which is i, which is a portion of the sum, one portion of the sum. The other portion of the sum is in num map. I'm gonna say num map of delta, and I'm gonna get the value of it because the value is what's gonna contain the index. This is gonna be clear when I show you what I'm saving here. If it doesn't match here, I need to save, I'm going to save the map dot put. I'm going to put the array of i and then the index i, all right? So every time when I pass through this array, I'm going to save the array element and then the index. And then before I directly go ahead and save it, every every number that I check might be a possible solution. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first check if the num map already contains the delta, which is the difference that I'm looking for. If I already encountered it, then the value of that thing is the index of the previous element, and then the current element's value, the current element's index is i, so I'm gonna return these two, all right? So that's the um, 
the pseudocode, the algorithm. Now let's write some code and actually test this out. So I'm going to create a Java class here with the main method. The name of the class is challenge to to sum, right? And then now uh, in my main method, I'm going to call this method here, which is uh, public static, and I'm going to return an array of integers. It's going to be two element array, and then uh, I'm going to call this get to sum, and then this accepts two inputs. One is the array, and one is the expected result. Right? That's the inputs to our algorithm. So I'm going to make this an int array numbers, and then the integer target. And now I can call this from my main method. Let's say int numbers. And I'm going to give the same numbers that we picked in this example. All right, I'm going to say two, three, seven, four, and and then I'm going to set the target as seven, and I'm going to print get to sum of numbers and target. All right, now we have the, the structure ready. Now let's implement the algorithm that we've discussed. What do I have to do? I need to loop through this list. So I'm going to have a for loop here. Die is zero. Now I am going to get the delta equals target minus numbers of i. So this is the delta that I need to look for. Now I need to make sure if this delta has already been encountered. So in order to figure out, keep a track of what are the numbers that I've already encountered, I need to keep a map. So I'm going to make a map of integer and integer. So the key is going to be the value of the number and then the value of the map is going to be the position of that, the index in the array. All right, so I'm going to say, uh, let's call it visited numbers equals new. I'm going to make this a hash map. Now, since I have the delta, I can check, has this delta already been encountered? If visited numbers dot contains key of delta, well, I need to return the the right positions, right? So let me tackle that in a little bit. If it doesn't contain it, I need to keep track of this new number and then proceed further, right? So let's say this doesn't contain. Now I need to save this value to visited numbers. Visited numbers dot put. The key is going to be numbers of i, and then the value is going to be the position I. So every time I'm visiting a number, I'm putting the, the contents into the key and then the index into the value, right? So now that I've done this, every time I'm checking for this delta, if this delta has already been visited, the other piece of the sum, if it's already been visited, then I need to return uh, a new integer array with two numbers. What are the two numbers? The first number is going to be the current position, which is one part of the sum. The second index is going to be the value of this delta key. All right, so I'm going to get the value visited numbers dot get of delta. All right, now if this all goes through and then you don't have any matches, well, now the question is, how do you want to handle the errors? You can, of course, throw an exception or you can return index minus one minus one. I guess I'm just going to do that. I'm going to return int of minus one and minus one. This is something that if you're um, in an interview, you might want to ask the interviewer, okay, what is the expected behavior if nothing matters? Make a new here. And now our algorithm is pretty much done. So if I were to run this with this particular array and with this expected target, it should match index one and index three. Let's find out. I'm going to right click run as Java application. All right, let me save this into an array here. Result. And then I'm going to print result of zero and result of one, right? So I get three and one. So let's do something else. Uh, let's say the result is six. 
in which case it should print 0 and then 3. All right, let's run this. It prints 3 and 0. Uh, let's try some negative numbers. Make this minus 2. And then uh, let's say the result is 6. Now it should print 0 and 4. All right, run as it prints 0 and 4. All right, so that was a quick look at solving another uh, coding challenge, which is to get the indices of two values in the array whose sum adds up to an expected sum. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.